Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. Well, I'll tell you, joining us on the phone today, we have the Annapolis Dragon Boat Club. And I will preface this by saying that it's not the entire club, but it's just the two big wigs of the club. We've got Joni Kraft, who is the chair, and Liz Carlin, who is the treasurer. How are you guys doing today? We're great. Um, I'm going to have to uh, put my dog away No, somewhere. no, 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 no. Bring your dog here. What kind of dog is it? We, we love dogs. Uh, she, she's a Labrador, and she doesn't like when I'm talking to anybody else but her. So, um, well, but as, anyway. as a Labrador should. I know. Right. <laughs> My name is Joni Kraft, and um, you're exactly correct. I'm the chairwoman of the Annapolis Dragon Boat Club, have been for about a year. Um, I joined the club in 2012, and I am a breast cancer survivor of 40, uh, no, uh, 30, no, how many years? 26 years. 26 years I'm a breast cancer survivor. You know what, Joni? It, the fact that you can't remember how many years is amazing. That's so awesome. It is. I'm going to let Liz introduce herself. Okay. Hi, I'm Liz Carlin, <laughs> and I am the treasurer. I have been a member of the club since 2017. And I have been a survivor for eight years as of this past uh, January. Well, go um, you. That's amazing. Yeah, I am happy, thrilled about that, to be honest with you. Um, and I can't tell you how thrilled I was to find this club uh, during my recovery process and so forth, because um, it has given me a purpose, to be honest with you. And um, I love everybody in it. And we just get along so well. And the purpose of the the mission of the club just just hits the mark for me. So I'm I'm just delighted to be here. Well, okay. The, now the the club itself, the Annapolis Dragon Boat Club, and people can learn more about this at annapolisdragonboatclub.org. But I was looking on the website, and it's to promote health, well being. You've got a social aspect of it. Uh, obviously, rowing these dragon boats is very cool, um, but it's also to support recovery from breast and other cancers. And is that, I mean, is that what this club was founded for, for breast cancer survivors? You know, primarily it it's, was founded originally by a doctor from Canada whose name um, is um, Don, McKen McKenzie. Don McKenzie. And he found, after some research, he found that the action of paddling, we call it paddling, not rowing, um, the action of paddling actually helps with recovery from lymphedema and helps um, kind of lessen the effects of treatment, radiation primarily. The founder of our club is a man by the name of Mike Ashford. Um, someone like gotta love, Garvey. gotta love Mike. Exactly. He um, he is actually a breast cancer survivor himself. And so in 2010, he decided a great way to give back to the community would be to to raise money and bring in dragon boating to Annapolis. That's awesome. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's you mentioned about the the act of paddling and curing because I do have a friend of mine that did have a double mastectomy with with some cancer, and she said that the cancer treatments aside, the recovery, the pain was in, was incredible, and I'd imagine. I mean. That makes sense to me that you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're paddling and you're using those those muscles and you're you're building them back up again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We have some members um, who joined last year that are still in active treatment, and they say that it, it really has helped them a great deal. And and the women that uh, paddle with us who have lymphedema say that it it really is a a big help um, to keep that under control. Do you have to be a survivor um, or slash a warrior, I guess, to participate with this? No, you don't. Um, we are just over 50% warriors, and we welcome everybody and anyone that wants to support 
us as well as anyone else that they know by um, paddling with us and by spreading the word and by racing with us or just being on Spot Creek with us. We encourage anyone and everyone to come try it. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I, I realize that breast cancer predominantly affects females more than males. Obviously, it's not unheard of from males, but I mean, is this primarily a female paddling club or is this? It is. Okay. Um, it is primarily female, but we are trying to um, get more men involved. Um, some of our spouses or partners and our coach is um, uh, a male who has, he lives in Baltimore and he's been part of the club from the very beginning. Um, his name is Peter Van de Kessel and he's very committed and comes from Baltimore three times a week to train us. Wow. Is he a tough coach? Yes. He <laughs> is tough. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we have different um, practices every week. Um, on Tuesdays, it's a little, we call it technical Tuesdays, where um, it's a little bit lighter paddle. And then on Thursday is our race practices, where we go through um, the racing sequences and um, it's tougher. And then Saturday mornings is a little bit lighter paddle. And sometimes once a month, we have what's called a soft paddle where we invite women who may be under treatment or, or men um, or anyone who wants to just try it without getting kind of too beaten up. <laughs> well, that, that's, oh, that's great. Oh. Now, do you guys row year round? I mean, provided there's no ice on the Creek and there's not any ice this winter, that's for sure. <laughs> we are going to start our paddles this season about a month and a half earlier than we would have in any other season that's primarily because of our trip to new zealand um new zealand it'll be fall down there when we get there and so they're just coming off of that uh full season so they're in good shape and you know half the world will be in good shape where we have been off the water since october and had an anticipated some colder weather here so we covered the boats and put them to sleep um but we're going to uncover them and get on the water um first weekend in march um we oh. had we had in the past we had paddled indoors um we had a member that had an indoor pool that we sort of jury rigged some seats next to the pool to um imitate our but we we we've lost that opportunity so now we're going to be hitting up the the community pools and the uh, county pools possibly for letting us uh, use them next season. We won't endeavor for that this season, but next season. You know, I'm 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 envisioning this, and this looks hysterical to me. That there's some sort of a stationary thing sitting on side of a swimming pool with people mm -hmm. just paddling to nowhere. Correct. <laughs> Our coach um, made seats that mimic the the seating arrangement in the boat, and so we sit on the side of the pool and paddle. Stir up the water. <laughs> That's neat. Do, now, do the um do, do the boats? Do they have like a like? Are they like a cruise shell where the seats move and they've got a slide that goes back and forth, or are they stationary seats? No, it's um they're stationary and it's there are twenty paddlers and we sit two by two, um from the front to the back and then the in the back is the steerer who stands. Very much, if you can envision a gondolier, that's what um, he or she looks like. And then a drummer in the front seat. Um, Keeping the strokes. Keeps keeps the time. Mm -hmm. So there's 22 in the boat. It's a 40-foot skull. Wow. How much does that weigh? 600 pounds, I think. They're fiberglass. We just ordered a new boat, so we're very excited. It's coming from Florida, hopefully by the end of um, March. So it'll be our third boat. Our our second one sprung a leak last summer, so we've been kind of jury rigging to keep it afloat. Um, but we, we are getting a new boat. So we're excited about that. Literally taping it on the bottom to keep the water out. <laughs> and put bail, bail. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. But, now, now these boats are really cool looking. I mean, these, I mean, the, the dragon boats, I mean, they've got the arching sweeping bow with the, the head and everything else. No, no, they, they have a head, a dragon head and a tail that we can put on. We don't use it for every paddle, but we put it on when we, sometimes we go down in Annapolis, if you know Ego Alley, um, in front of 
uh, pussers, pussers, and, and yeah, the fleet reserve. It, they call it Eagle Alley, where everybody goes down in their big boats to show off. And sometimes when we show off, we go down Eagle Alley with the head and the tail. Yeah. And then we race in there amongst ourselves, two boats next to each other, and everybody on the side cheers us on. So. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> but you, you mentioned New Zealand. So what is what is the deal with New Zealand? New Zealand is an opportunity for breast cancer survivors, warriors, to paddle in non-competitive races with 3,500 other breast cancer survivors from around the world. It happens every four years somewhere in the world that somebody sponsors this and puts this amazing festival on um, with parades and ceremonies and races and food and just everything you can imagine. It's, it's We call it the Olympics of breast cancer dragon boat racing. Um, but it happens every four years, and we got delayed by a year because of COVID. So we've been planning this for over three years, and it's finally 56 days away. Yeah. Oh, that's fan- that's fantastic. Now, how many how many of you guys are going down there? Just over 50 people that are going, including the paddlers. 40. Oh, oh 40, 40 people who are going, um, including the paddlers and and there's and our supporters. Um, Under Armour actually has provided us with uniforms, which awesome. is amazing. Um, when we've had other just great support from the community um, to raise funds to help us get there. So you can imagine going all the way to New Zealand is, uh, it's an undertaking. Oh, for um, sure. Not, I'm, I'm assuming maybe wrongly, but that you're, you're not taking your boat. So you're either renting or borrowing a boat to compete in. Correct. They, um, the, these Olympics of dragon boating, they're put on by uh, companies that, that do this. All right. So, uh, and they provide the boats there? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. All the boats will be provided. And that's the thing for all the races around the country here in the United States. There are two or three companies that have uh, a major amount of boats that they trailer from one place to the next, um, depending on, you know, south in the winter and north in the summer. And they have these festivals or races, not as big as what we're going to, obviously, but. Um, sort of regional races all around the country. You'd be amazed how many dragon boat clubs there are in this country. I'm going to be Googling as soon as we get done with this phone call to find, find that out. But that's, that's yep. amazing. Come, come paddle with us. <laughs> now, does, do, do we have a chance of bringing something like that to Annapolis at some point? Well, it, it, logistically, I'm not sure where we put it. You need some fairly calm water with fairly, uh, with a large, expanse of land for tents and you know things of that nature of course the naval academy seawall on the severn side would be great but i don't think we're going to get that nor is it calm enough in there i wouldn't think yeah st john's college is we've thought about that down by their waterfront but um, so a lot of these races throughout our country here are on lakes and the one we're going to in new zealand is on a lake so uh, the waters are calmer, and there's a lot more areas that are not developed. These are usually parklands that we go to. Okay. How, how, how long is the race? Well, there are, um, generally there are three races that we would participate in um, each day. And they're, it doesn't sound very impressive. They're usually about two minutes or so. Um, 500, a 500-meter 500 race is about two minutes. Okay. Well, but a- you would be... This you is would not be, different than crew. Yeah, you would be surprised. Um, at the end of a race, you, you're you're spent. You're spent. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's a you're right. It's spent. But there's a longer race at 1,200 meters that goes around and around in circles, which is like a race car, <laughs> like a bumper car. <laughs> bumper cars, because <laughs> these boats are going around in circles, and it's it's it's, it's crazy <laughs> but that's that's another one and then uh, there's shorter races too 200 meter races um that are you know less than a minute normally so and you're absolutely right boy i tell you, you know i mean you do anything in any kind of a high intensity whether it be you know running at, at an all-out sprint for two minutes or rowing for two minutes or uh mm-hmm. you know, playing basketball for two minutes or hockey whatever it is i mean it it, it kicks you it, it kicks your butt that's for sure yeah. 
It does. Kicks and a I, lot of things. <laughs> I, I think um, I'd like to just go back and, and put in a plug again for it being such a support network for breast cancer survivors in our community because we we're really not your traditional support group. You know, there's no sitting around in a circle and tears and pouring out your your heart. And in all honesty, we we don't talk about breast cancer very much because you're out on the water and but you have this support group of women and supporters around you that um, it really is very special. Cancer, unfortunately, touches pretty much everybody um, in, in some way, whether it's somebody that you know or yourself or that you're related to. And I've known several people that have survived various different forms of cancer. And uh, you, what you said is, I mean, we're not the typical support group holding hands in a circle and, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I don't mean to make light of it, but, to, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves. And it's like, no, let's get up. Let's enjoy the water. Let's enjoy right. what, what we've got and the camaraderie and everything else. And, and let's row mm-hmm. or paddle. Sorry. Right. Sorry. I didn't mean to say row. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, and that's why we call ourselves warriors rather than survivors, because, you know, yeah, you can warriors. survive a lot of things, but. To be a warrior, you really have to put an effort into it, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Most of the club is going to New Zealand, it seems. Nope, only about a third. We are not even a third. Let's see. It's uh, we we're up to about 120 members last season, the end of last season, which was a huge increase from the previous seasons because of COVID. A lot of women and people generally didn't go to the doctors in those couple of years. And there has been a huge increase in diagnosis of cancers and breast cancer in particular. So this is why we've gotten probably over 25, 30 new members last season, breast cancer survivors, mm-hmm. and many of those still in treatment. It, it's, it's very sad mm-hmm. wow. that, that those are the numbers, but that's the reality right now. And one in eight women will get breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, don't wait. Go to the doctor, get checked, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and come join us anyway. Join us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you talk about come join us. How can the folks that are listening? How can we help you guys? I mean, you know, as I said, cancer touches everyone. It seems, and you guys are a nonprofit, right? Correct. We are. We're a five hundred one three C. Okay, uh, so we can we can donate. We that that that's an easy one, right? Right. And there, there's always, always naming rights for the new boat coming up, you know, for a nice large donation. We would be happy to put somebody's name on the side of the boat. Oh, interesting. That, interesting. Um, on our website, there is a button, a donate button, and there's more information on our website, um, just how you can get involved or, or come join us for a paddle to see what it's all about. We also go to um, the cancer days at the... Luminous Health Center, and as well as the Maryland Oncology and Hematology Day, which is June 3rd this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a booth there, and we will, you know, talk to everyone that comes to that. Um, So that's a good way to come see us and to um, talk to somebody about it. If you can't get down to Pier 4 Marina, where we keep our boats, we have a lovely, lovely relationship with the marina there. And we're very grateful to uh, Chris McClary, the the marina owner. Mm -hmm. He's been, he had lost several members of his family to breast cancer and has been very supportive. And that's right at the bottom of 4th or 4th Street and Spa Creek, right? In East Court. Uh Uh-huh. Um, directly across from the Naval Academy or the, 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 it's Campbell Park down there. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So you're just, you so say you're just, if you go, if you're going down Severn Avenue, you take a left just past, um, Carroll's Creek or actually probably Correct. park in that Carroll's Creek parking lot and walk around the, the corner. The boat yard bar and grill. Yeah, like that's yeah. 4th Street. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Now, now is, is there a, is there social happy hours after your, after you kick your butts rowing? Oh yes, we, we do. We, um, <laughs> We keep, I think, uh, Forward Brewing. We'll put in a plug for Forward Brewing because they're a big sponsor of ours, and and also the Boat Yard. Um, right. We keep them in business on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. <laughs> uh, you know, Forward Brewing is new to town, and they they're just such a great neighbor. They are. really are. They helped us with our Dragon Fest this past summer. We had a first annual. Actually, I was told it couldn't be the first annual and had to be the inaugural. Right. inaugural. 
Dragon Fest. And it was scheduled for October 2nd this past year. And I'm sure nobody remembers, but a hurricane came through that day and <laughs> we had to postpone and we had to beg and plead the city to let us have it on one of the weekends when the boat show was up. So we had it October 9th. Ford Brewery uh, supplied all the beer for us and um, some of the other businesses on that street and around Eastport were very supportive. We had live music and I believe we're going to do it again this year. So we'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. When does your actually season really start to get into full swing? I mean, I imagine when it gets a little bit warmer out, it's a lot more pleasant. Yeah, our our opening day, um, and we have uh, Mayor Gavin Buckley has agreed to come. Um, our opening day is May 13th, and we call it the opening of the eyes ceremony because I guess in the Chinese tradition, um, to get the dragons ready for the season, you have, you paint their eyes open. So... Uh, we've done that for many years where we have um, local artists come to paint the eyes or um, Mike Ashford, our founder, comes sometimes or the mayor actually painted one of the eyes last year. We get some doctors um, to come that are mm -hmm. all near and dear to us and past members and families of members that we've lost, that we've which lost. is the hard part. Yes, exactly. So that's the part. Do you paint them closed in the fall? We'll say we do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually, we, we, we in. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a, a member who is a, a wonderful artist and she paints some clothes a couple weeks before the, the ceremony. And then we have the dignitaries who come to our opening, paint the eyes open. So That's awesome. How else can we help you? Uh, we can come out and we can row. We can obviously spread the word. Spreading um, the word. Spread the word. Yeah. Do you need dockside help maintenance help i mean do you use volunteers that are you know maybe somebody's terrified of water i don't know i mean is there a... we have wonderful volunteers that we call our our schleppers and um, a lot of them are spouses or um, members who, who don't necessarily paddle but they come down and help us maintain the boats we were looking to repair our red boat so if there's anybody out there that would like to donate their services for a gel coat or fiberglassing our red boat to get it back in shape that would be amazing that would be amazing um but any any support you know even if it's ten dollars on our website is certainly goes a long way to helping our our breast cancer community it sure does you know for all the men and women that are going through treatment or surviving the, the treatments of breast cancer you guys are doing just an amazing service for them. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I don't, I can't speak from any kind of a personal position, but you know, this, this is huge. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, check us out on the website, obviously look at our mission and then you'll understand. Um, we have some great videos. We have yep. some great um, survivor stories on there about some of the women. Um, we're doing a news story that'll be appearing about a mother daughter um, who were diagnosed within a month of each other. Oh, gosh. Yep. And they're doing great. They're, they're new members. So, yeah, our website has a lot of information. And, you know, Liz and I, we put in a lot of hours. People say, oh, the Annapolis Dragon Book Club. How That can't be that much work, you know, to a 501. <laughs> Famous we, last words, right? Yeah, we, we put in, as does our board. We have a board meeting actually tomorrow night. We have 10 members on our board who are very hardworking and it, it takes a lot to, to keep us afloat. <laughs> right. I'll pardon that pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is wonderful. I want everyone to go to Annapolis dragon boat org and check them out. And the second thing I want you to do is to put on your calendar, May 13th for the opening of the eyes ceremony and the start of their season. And I want everybody to keep an eye out on ego alley for these warrior women paddling. I got that right again. Uh, up, yep. up and down Ego Alley, uh, probably on Saturday, would probably, I imagine, is a good day to go because uh -huh. everybody can get down there on the weekend. And if anybody can help them, and, you know, as you said, whether it's $10 or donating a gel coat for the Red Boat um, mm -hmm. or sending 40 people to New Zealand, I think that might be a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know they can certainly use it. And you're, you're taking a, a really horrible thing and turning it on its ear. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I do want to put real quickly um, a shout out to the Bosom Buddies charity. Um, it's 
we've gotten involved with them just this last year and they have been big donors to us. Very um, supportive. Yep. Super supportive. And we now have a fund called the Bridget McKee Bosom Buddies Fund. She was a dear uh, member of ours who passed away at just 42 years old. Yep. And so we now have a, a fund um, in her name that we use specifically for breast cancer. Financial aid. Financial aid. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you, I want to thank you guys very much for your time today. I know um, you guys are probably getting prepared for, if not New Zealand, certainly your board meeting tomorrow. So, <laughs> um, Again, everybody should go to AnnapolisDragonBoatClub.org, see what they're all about, and definitely get down and check them out in person. This doesn't sound like something that you want to be just listening to on a podcast. This is just something that needs to be experienced. And see the strength of 22 women in a boat, primarily women in a boat, is is a sight to see. It is. Our oldest member is eighty years old. Nope, so. eighty two. Eighty two. Eighty two. How's your how how young is your youngest? Forty forty two. Forty two. Yeah. Oh my gosh. A big spread. Oh my yeah. gosh. Now now how, how how good a shape is this eighty two year old? I mean can she, she's amazing. She, she's she, a- she can kick some butt. <laughs> she can. She is actually one of our strokes who's in the front of the boat setting the pace. So <laughs> That's fantastic. Guys, thank you so very much on this. Again, um, AnnapolisDragonBoatClub.org. Go check it out. And to Joni Kraft, who is the chair of the board at this point, and Liz Carlin, who is the treasurer, um, get Liz busy. Get, get Donate. Go find there and donate. Click the button that says donate. Um, keep, her, keep her busy and let her uh, do her accounting <laughs> stuff or whatever the, whatever the treasurer does. But thank you guys so very much today. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, John. This has been wonderful. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.